everyone! Today we're going to be making some op art. Op art is short for optical art, and it's a type of art that uses optical illusions to kind of trick and fool your eye. Like this piece with a bunch of circles and spirals and zigzags by Bridget Riley, and this piece by Victor Vasarely that uses a grid to kind of trick your eye into thinking that it's spheres. But first, some featured artwork. Wyatt made this awesome tessellation of some Pac-Man ghosts, and Ella Isle made this drawing of her name using the 3D Perspective Letters project. Great job, you guys. I also want to show you guys our new NB Clements Art website, which you can use to access our learning modules, download our learning module documents, use online resources like YouTube videos, art contests, art making, art games, and you can even look at other student artwork like Gabriel's tessellation here in our student art gallery. You can also submit work on the homepage by clicking the Submit Work button. Feel free to use it even if you're not a Clements student. The website is sites.google.com slash pgs.k12.va.us slash art. Now on to our project. For today's project, you'll need paper, as usual, a pencil, preferably with an eraser that works, I have my backup again, a ruler or some sort of straight edge to trace with, something circular to trace, doesn't matter what it is, and a marker of some sort. I'm going to be using a Sharpie. Here we go. Our first step is going to be to trace our circles. These are going to be the basis for our spheres. So I'm using this roll of tape. You can do just one circle in the middle, really big. You can do lots of little circles all over the page. However you want to do it is up to you. I'm going to do a few different circles by tracing the inside and outside of my tape roll here. And then I'm going to use my little paint tube here to trace a little bit of a smaller circle. It's okay if it's not totally perfect, that's what your eraser's for. Our next step is going to be to add little crosses in our circles. So a line straight down and straight across through the center of each of our circles. I'm going to use a ruler for this, but if you don't have a ruler, you can use anything with a straight edge to help you trace a straight line. Now using the lines that we just drew, we're going to draw curves on either side of each line out towards the edges of our circle. So that's going to go side to side as well as up and down. You can put as many of these curves as you want, but keep in mind that the more you put in there, the smaller the spaces are gonna be and the trickier it's gonna be for you to color in. So I'm just adding three curves in between the line that I drew and the edge of my circle. And then do the same on the top and bottom of your horizontal line. Repeat the steps for all of the circles that you drew on your paper. Next we're going to add our background. Now our background is going to look kind of like a checkerboard, so it's going to be made up of lines. Now I'm going to start with my vertical lines and try to line them up with these center lines that I drew in my sphere so that it looks like they're actual 3D spheres kind of bulging out of the checkerboard instead of like they were just placed there. Make sure instead of overlapping your lines over your sphere, you keep the lines on the outside so it looks as if the grid is behind the sphere and not over top of it. Once you've completed your vertical lines, we're going to do horizontal lines across the exact same way to complete the checkerboard pattern. When 
you're done with your lines, it should look something like this. Now we're going to use our marker. I'm using Sharpie. You can use any kind of marker you want. It doesn't really matter. I like the classic black and white though, so I'm using a Sharpie. Alternating squares, we're going to fill in all the way with our Sharpie. So that means that any square that I color in black, the squares that are next to it and above and below it are going to be white. This is going to give it that checkerboard effect and is what's going to make it look as if the spheres are popping out of the background. Now we're going to create the exact same checkerboard effect in the background by coloring the alternating squares, just like we did for the spheres. I'm not going to lie to you guys, this is going to take a little bit of patience. If you do less circles or bigger checkerboard squares, you can make this go a little bit faster. Once you're finished coloring in your squares and yours looks something like this, you're going to grab your pencil and we're going to add in shadows underneath each of our spheres. That's going to make it look extra 3D and it's going to give it just that final touch that makes it look totally finished. Sketch out a curve underneath your circles using a pencil and then lightly shade it in. After you've lightly shaded inside the whole shadow, you're going to add some more shading closer to the circle to make it look as if the shadow is darker underneath of the sphere. That's going to give it a more realistic shadow and make it look even more 3D.
And there you have it, your 3D Sphere Optical Illusion Op Art. Don't forget to share your artwork with me by emailing it to the email address on the screen, mmilliker at pgs.k12.va.us, or you can now text it to me using my Google number, 804-803-3277. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy, and remember that I love you. Bye, guys.